Okay, what we're, you're looking at now is the North Atlantic Oscillation Observed and Ensemble Forecast. The black line represents the observed um, North Atlantic Oscillation. Anything below this dotted line is a negative oscillation. Anything above is positive. Um, well, and I'll explain how this could lead to snowstorms. Um, usually when you have a positive NAO, you tend to get uh, no blocking. And uh, the positive NAO is very good for Arctic ice. Because um, when you have a blocking pattern, it sends storms into uh, Canada, like into like uh, the Bay of, uh, what is it called, Labrador, and that decreases Arctic ice. And in 2010 and 2011, it was so bad that in January, Hudson Bay was still partially unfrozen, a record low ice extent for that area. Um, Labrador was completely unfrozen, and now Labrador is mostly, the coast of Labrador is mostly frozen, all of Hudson Bay is frozen. Ice extent for this year is good. Why? Because of the NAO. The NAO has not been negative most of this winter. There's been little bouts of negativity, then neutral, and then a little negative, but there's been a lot of positive phases as well. But, but back in 2010, 2011, there was a lot of negative NAO. And that caused the, the storms to come into the northeast, go northeast, and then loop. And then the Greenland block was so strong that it forced the storms to go back into Canada and deliver warm weather all the way into Hudson Bay. Um, it was incredible. Um, but as you can see, the NAO is going to go positive and then might go neutral or slightly or remain positive towards the end of February. If you like snow in the Northeast, that's not a very good forecast. But I'm going to go to a different uh, mod, a different uh, oscillation. I'm going to go to the uh, PNA, the Pacific North American pattern. And uh, the PNA has been mostly negative with little bursts of, bursts of positivity. Positive uh, PNA. For snow lovers in the Northeast, you need a positive PNA. And that's exactly what we're going to get. Some models are saying it's going to stay at uh, like 0 0.5, 0 0.4 levels, and some are saying it's going to go to 0 0.1. I think the PNA is going to stay at a 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. That's not perfect for snow, but we'll get what we take. And this is the uh, Arctic Oscillation, or AO. Um, this is going to be a very... Um, you see some are showing negative uh, 6, and um, some are also showing um, like m between neutral at, at lowest to minus six. So it's going to be somewhere in between, like a minus two to minus three, I expect. Somewhere like it was in the middle of January, right here. Um, that is bad for the Midwest and especially for the Southeast. Not too bad for the Northeast. For the Northeast, you need, uh, I think, a neutral. A uh, neutral NAO, uh, no, neutral AO and uh, I think a negative NAO. That dives the cold air into the Northeast. The Northeast has been spared mostly of cold, except when the, the PNA uh, AO went negative. Uh, for snow lovers in the Northeast, I am thinking we're going to get a good storm uh, towards the middle of February. Why? As the PNA is going to be positive as here and the AO is going to be negative here and the NAO is going to try to go neutral or negative I'm expecting a big snowstorm in the Northeast and this is the the next generation weather lab www.weather.co.edu slash forecast this is the College of DuPage uh, located in DuPage, Illinois um, okay this is surface. This is uh, surface conditions in forecast. And this is temperatures at 2 meters uh, of altitude, or 7 to 8 feet above uh, sea level. And uh, here's what they're showing. They're showing, here's the ice storm we're having right now, moving off the coast, bringing that brought the ice to the Midwest and to parts of the Northeast. It's moving off. And then we're going to get this storm coming in. Um, I'll show you precipitation now. 
I'm expecting a squall line early Thursday morning um, between 6 and 8 a.m. to plow through New York City. I'm expecting gusts up to 60 miles an hour, torrential rain, and probably a lot of wind. Yes. I don't know if we're going to have thunder. Let's check the temperature at this time. Um, okay. This is current temperatures. Temperature is going to be around... Um, okay. One below the 65. Temperature is going to be in the upper 50, so around 60 degrees. And this is not daytime. These are nighttime temperatures. Um, we might have... We might have temperatures um, in the low 60s Wednesday afternoon, and with that, with, with such a big contrast with the Arctic air here and the warm Gulf air coming in, we could have a tornado outbreak, as Dr. Greg Forbes in the Weather Channel discussed here, and even up to parts of Virginia. And we we might have a squall of, as I said, a damaging squall line that's going to hit the northeast here, and behind the squall, we're going to have a break. Um, and then this weak clipper system that was initially supposed to hit New York City and I expected it to hit the De Delmarva and that's exactly what will happen and there's another clipper system that's going to come down um, this is the latest model as you can see um, model run, current run this is the latest run the next run is going to come out at about 5pm current time is 1.40 um, and I'll show you uh, this clipper system, as you can see, is going to form off the coast. I don't think this is going to happen. I think the storm will be a little bit more robust than what the models are forecasting. As you can see, there's a whole other bunch of other models to select from. There is the short 18-hour uh, model. There is the 84-hour North American model. There is the 240-hour GFS model. And there is the European Center for Mid-Range Weather Forecast and the UK United Kingdom meteorology office oh guess it's not working right now but hold on okay the UK Matt is predicting the squall to hit a little later actually Friday Thursday afternoon but the GFS is a, is a more reliable model so is the European I don't know about the UK Matt but the UK Matt is also a pretty reliable model um, usually what meteorologists do is they take a bunch of models together and they and they average it out and give up their weather forecast. Um, I think what's going to happen is this low here might be a little bit more further to the south or a little more robust, and this might trigger this close, this storm here to be a little more robust as well. And I think eastern New England, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. I don't know about New York City. I think the storm will be a little too weak for New York City. As it's been, New York City has been lately in a snow drought. Central Park only got four inches. My neighborhood in Queens Village, five, 10 miles east of Central Park, different story. We, we got dumped with snow during Winter Storm Athena. We got a, a, a little over a foot um, because the storm really exploded and we got a pretty good, n nice snow band that came into my area on uh, November 7th, that, later that evening. And the weird thing is, the National Weather Service never inter issued a winter storm warning they weren't expecting the Hudson Valley cold and the um, what is it called oh yeah the the uh, the work I'm looking for um, yeah the yeah I have too much in my mind right now and I forgot that word but it's ha dynamic cooling I just got it thank you dynamic cooling um, to be as robust as what some of the models predicted and I knew that we're gonna get a foot I told my parents we're going to get a foot of snow. The meteorologist predicted an inch. Well, I had a feeling they'll be wrong. I had a feeling it'll be more than an inch. Unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I was right because I love snow. Um, well, this storm, I believe, is going to is gonna do quite a bit. Um, I don't know. The European is also th is not th thinking it's going to do a lot, but temperature and, and surface le level pressure. SLP stands for service level pressure, and uh, the European thinks it's going to be a little further to the north. The GFS thinks it's going to be a little further to the south. It, it's most likely going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm going to go to a different website now. Um, I'm going to go to classic.weatherunderground.com, um, and I'm going to show you a model run. 
um, model maps and um, okay Just add okay the European European Center for Mid-Range Weather Forecast. This is the latest model that just came out. To uh, 12 Greenwich Mean Time. W or, really, this model came out at 3 a.m. today. And uh, let's see. Unfortunately, when you go really far out, it, on this website, it tends not to be as good. Actually, 12... 5... This model... Um, really well hinting on the storm yet okay I'm gonna have to go to a different run this one is not working so well okay and uh, yeah this model run is not doing what it's supposed to do great oh here's a storm that um, was supposed to bring according to the European Center for mid-range weather forecast flurries are expected in New York City but unlikely I think this storm is going to go down into New Jersey, as the model is expected. Yeah, Virginia and the Delmarva Peninsula is probably going to get some good snows. Um, I think um, this winter is going to be pretty darn chilly for the Northeast, and we're probably going to have a good snowstorm. Now I'm going to go to a different website. Um, um, I'm going to go to Google and then go to a link to the um, to the NOAA page to see how the um, El Nino or La Nina is doing. Uh, and they're saying we're currently in a neutral phase right now. See, and so alert system not active. And so neutral is uh, favored through the Northern Hemisphere spring 2013, which means we are neutral. Um, and there's a chance of a La Nina developing towards the uh, winter of 2000, fall of 2013, which means we're going to have a very active hurricane season. I'm expecting 16 to 20 named storms, and uh, I've never done this before, but I'm going to predict a hurricane seven months in advance. I mean, I've been right lately with a lot of storms but short term and I'm going to test my luck I'm going to test it I'm predicting a hurricane not as bad as Sandy absolutely not I'm predicting a hurricane is going to hit North Carolina early September 2013 and I'm expecting it to have the name I I'm going to I'm expecting to have an I name um, I think it's going to be Isidore but that was the last name used in 2001 no, no, it's the door was 2002. My bad. Uh, wow, actually. ISIS. Um, yeah, that, we're going to have that, that hurricane is going to form just off the Cape Verde coast as a tropical wave. It's going to track westward, and it will become a tropical storm halfway between the Leeward Islands. No, two-thirds towards the Leeward Islands because there'll be a little dry Saharan air working into the storm, and it will become a hurricane just north of uh, the Leeward Islands, heading west and northwest, and just east of the Bahamas, it's going to become a Category 4 hurricane, but not like 155. It's going to be like 140, 145. Then it's going to turn north-northwest, head north, and make landfall just east of Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, I'm not saying exactly what day. I'm expecting it between the 7th and the 14th of September. It's going to make landfall um, as a one as a Category 3 with 120 mile an hour winds. It's going to ride up the coast and pass just east of New York City. So no, New York City will not see any major flooding from this. There might be some, um, some splash over in the north shore of Long Island. But by the time the hurricane makes it up to the coast and passes just east of Cape Cod, it will be a Category 1 hurricane, possibly extra tropical with 70 to 80 mile an hour winds. It's going to be like a nor'easter, except it's going to have tropical characteristics with it. Um, that's my prediction for 2012, 2000, uh, for the 2013 hurricane season. Winter, I'm expecting a good snowfall in, your, in the northeast right around President's Day. And for severe weather, which I didn't talk about, I'm going to talk about it in the second video, I'm expecting a very active tornado season. 